Now, a video about meaning. Um, a bit of a clarification about what I think meaning actually is. Right, now, I think what meaning will, what we'll find out that meaning is, in my opinion, is going to be some sort of a phase transition in the human mind. So that's why I think any sort of attempt to find meaning outside the human mind is going to be completely pointless. And um, to look at, for example, as we unlock videos about absurdity, the moment you start taking an external perspective to um, the human mind, if you start looking at your own life from an external perspective, for example, the perspective of the universe as a whole, you'll find that it becomes meaningless and absurd. And uh, that is absolutely true, I think. But what would meaning be then if it only exists within a person's own mind? A lot of people have uh, alluded to this uh, using terms as you make your own meaning. But what actually happens when you make your own meaning? And I think the best way of explaining this is by using an example um, of something that's been observed in the physical world as well as has been described mathematically and that is the problem of a network of nodes. You start with a number of completely unconnected nodes and that could be anything. And the thing is, the, the, the funny thing about that is it's a mathematical description of something completely abstract, just points that mean nothing. But it has been found to apply to an awful lot of real life scenarios in physics at least and I think that there might even be something to this here that I'm going to explain to do with meaning. Now let's see what meaning would be like let's see what would happen in a human mind or in a human brain when they feel that they've derived meaning from something and the best way of understanding that is if you look at what happens in a very young child's brain because basically in a very young child's brain you have all these neurons that are essentially, even in reality that's not the case, but essentially not really connected to each other and the young child is bombarded with impressions that at first make absolutely no sense to it whatsoever. But every impression, every word that's spoken to that child, everything they see, everything like that is stored and becomes in this example here a node and at first they're just loose nodes there's no connection whatsoever between them but as life goes on in the young child's brain you'll see that the, br that the brain will start making connections and say hang on a second this seems to be connected to that or that seems to be connected to that now I'm going to go back to mathematical to mathematics as the example because in mathematics you can describe what happens to, an, to a set of nodes like this as over time you establish random connections between pairs of nodes. And the funny thing is that there comes a point in time and this is what in physics is called a phase transition when the network that you see here suddenly changes from a loosely basically unconnected set of nodes to a completely interconnected network where every node can reach another node via some path or another and I think that when that happens in a human brain, when you get to that point, that's when we feel that there is meaning to our life. When we have a network of connected concepts, ideas, impressions, words, that is complete in the sense of the word that has gone through that phase transition, 
that is when we feel as human beings that there is meaning to what happens around us and it is purely you know in one sense it's random in the other sense it's purely personal it is not something that is actually existent out there but of course over evolution over the billions of years that evolution has taken place this has been happening in brains and the most successful brains are the ones where this random set of connections or more or less random set of connections bears at least some sort of relation to what is really out there in, in reality. So this is not just completely nonsense, nonsense random set of connections. There is actually a purpose to it. It helps us participate in the physical world and participate successfully. As a result, we will probably find that a lot, lot of these connections, even though they are more or less random, are mirrored across individual people. You'll see that um, my set of connections will, to a large extent, mirror your set of connections. And as a result, we can communicate to each other. Because I strain words and concepts and images together and present them to you. And because your network is not that dissimilar from mine, you'll interpret this and says, hopefully, <laughs> you'll say, that makes sense. And you'll understand what I'm trying to say, and therefore what I'm saying has meaning to you. And I think that's more or less what, boil, what it boils down to. It also explains why people don't understand each other most of the time, because there is differences between my set of connections in my brain and yours. And therefore, sometimes I'm trying to say something to you, which then triggers the wrong connections in your brain or different connections in your brain and you'll misunderstand what I'm saying. But it also shows that it is possible for us to communicate in a way that I can convey meaning to you. And I think that is, to a large extent, what meaning could be as such. I hope this makes sense. Thank you.